build that through an expansion of that particular tool they have now. All right, Vic Thorpe, thanks very much indeed. Very interesting. Now, as you've been hearing in a few hours' time, India's Space Agency will launch a spacecraft designed to boldly go where no Asian, no Asian nation has gone to date. We're talking about Mars, and if they are successful, it would be a technological leap that would propel India ahead of space rivals, China and Japan, in the field of interplanetary exploration. But the country's been criticised for spending on a space programme when it's got millions of poor living on less than a dollar a day. This particular mission has cost India around $73 uh, million. Now, in context, that's relatively a small amount. For example, in the States, it would spend ten times as much on a similar mission. Overall, India spends around a billion dollars a year on its space program and has 20 satellites in orbit for communication and remote sensing. Well, to talk through this, I'm joined by Alistair Scott, president of Interplanetary Society. He joins us uh, via webcam. Uh, thank you for being on the program. Uh, there is a huge debate about a country like India investing so much in space. I'm assuming that you would be uh, for this kind of investment Give us your argument, given the thousands, if not millions of people who are really struggling to, to get by in India. Well, I think as, as recognized by India, the, the space technology is a very powerful one and a very important one if a country is going to progress. And I think they've recognized this and they make the investment. They've been very clever about their investment because they used to buy their satellites, they used to buy their equipment but gradually they've transferred that over to manufacturing it themselves and you always have to have the next target they've always been they've always been trying to get ahead of the game and now they're doing it they're actually doing their own thing they're actually they went to the moon in 2008 so where next mars has to be it but uh, what evidence is there to show that countries that have really pushed forward in terms of their space programs have seen you know an economic benefit for the whole economy as opposed to a small industry or aspect of an economy? Well, I think it goes fairly deeply into the whole of the, uh, the lifeblood of the nation in that education uh, takes a, a, a great leap forward in that people come on board, they, they see the technologies that they want to, want to use in everyday life, and they start to actually take an interest and, and, and become highly educated. In fact, we we're now using a lot of our, uh, our best engineers and scientists come from India and China. All right, Alistair, I'm afraid we're going to have to leave this conversation at this point. We could talk for a long time about this, but we appreciate your time. Alistair Scott, President of Interplanetary Society, joining us via webcam.